Today, we're looking at Diamine's Tyron Purple. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Diamine's Tyron Purple is, as it sounds, a purple ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples, I put the ink into a different pen for a day, I then put it into a Noodler's Nib Creeper to take my notes for this video. Now, before we look at the writing samples, let's look at the sciency bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this nice lighter purple that's pushing its way up to then get the red that's going to give us this really interesting violet or purple color. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. Now we see the same purple and the same red, but the purple has created a line across the bottom where it really looks like it started to seep into the filter paper with only 10 minutes. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I'm drawn immediately to the lowercase h, and I see how much it's starting to blow out and become blurry, which makes me say I don't want to use this as a note taker because I'm afraid of losing things that are important. The water is lifting only the darkest sections of that ink. It's really leaving the purple behind that we saw in the chromatography. Pen flush is doing more than water did. What we're starting to see here with the pen flush is some of the white of the paper is really pushing through. It makes me say that pen flush is all that we're going to need to get this out of your pen. Now the one third bleach solution is completely removing it from the paper. I expect it would completely remove it from your pen, but I don't think that you would need to use that to clean this. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diamine's Tyron Purple has a viscosity of 2.45, making it normal. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I have tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine's Tyron Purple has an average dry time of 19 seconds, making it normal. Now let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, <clears throat> I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 whoops, has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shading. It's a great tone here. Great purple. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 14 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade, 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it in the smear test. You could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Tomoy River. No bleeding, yes we get ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, 21 seconds to dry. Now the medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 26 seconds to dry. Pretty good considering the extra fine was 21. The scrubby for both show us no color variation and we didn't get any in the smear test. Yeah, you could probably recover it, even on Tomoy River. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shading. The extra fine is the exact same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, 16 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 19 seconds to dry. 
The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium showed no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. This is a beautifully boring ink. It is the same all the time. And it is fantastic to know exactly what you're going to get, even if it doesn't give you shading. White lines. Now, this is a cheaper produced paper. It's really made so that you can take pictures of those notes and immediately have it digitally. So it's not really great for liquid inks. And we see that with the 1.1. We see it with the medium. It does not do too bad with the extra fine. It ghosts a lot all over. It does not touch the page underneath. I just don't think you could use the back of the page if you were using a medium or 1.1. Maybe with the fine. Maybe try a drier fine. The 1.1 has no spread, but it has feathering all over it. No halo, no sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry, which is weird that it did so much worse on the back than the extra fine. This is the medium, this is the extra fine. It's just weird because the dry time is about the same, but it is putting down more ink. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could recover it. Yes, you could. Strathmore writing paper. No bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shading. This is the one and only time I see this ink actually give, and I'm pretty sure, yeah. No? Okay. So we do see a couple times, but generally, this gives the exact same tone all the time. It's only a slight bit lighter than the 1.1. It's just like one tone lighter. The Extra Fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, eight seconds to dry. But again, that's the first time we see any color variation. Other than that, this has been perfect in maintaining the same tone. The medium is the exact same tone as the 1.1, which is just the tiniest bit darker than the extra fine. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium show no color variation. We didn't expect it, we didn't get it. And the smear test, yes, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. And this is P. Berger. It's a student grade paper, French ruled. It, so the fact that we cannot use the back of this page is not such a big deal, but it doesn't look too bad on the extra fine. Medium, no way. 1.1, no way. Extra fine, user's choice. I wouldn't. I know plenty of people that would. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. And this is the other time we see the slightest tone difference. It's only like one tone lighter on the extra fine. The extra fine has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade, six seconds to dry. The medium is that one tone darker than the extra fine, the same tone as the 1.1. The medium has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, no shade, eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you know, yeah, you could. You could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Great. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Dimine's Tyron Purple, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. And I really do like putting greens with purple. I chose Noodler's Green. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of, of Dimine's Tyron Purple? This is an interesting purple that leans ever so slightly towards magenta, and it's a standout purple among purples. It is absolutely fantastic to look at on the page. Now, I normally don't care for purples that lean magenta. I like my purples to be purple, but this one I really do enjoy writing with. Thanks for watching.